Hey guys and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to look at render settings for our animations. Before I want to uh, thank everybody who has subscribed, we've just crossed the 900 subs mark which is incredible, <laughs> absolutely amazing. Um, I'm proper chuffed that so many people are finding these videos useful. Um, and obviously thank you to everybody who has commented on videos, give me thumbs up and obviously a huge shout out to my patrons and subscribers on both Patreon and Subscribestar. If you haven't yet subscribed, then feel free to do it. Give me a thumbs up, uh, hit the notification icon to stay updated on any new content that I upload. And let me know what you think in the comments below. If you want to see a tutorial video on a specific topic that I haven't yet covered, then let me know and I'll do what I can. Let's jump right into this then. Some of this information comes from a YouTuber who uh, sent me a message called uh, Patrick Schoolderman. So thank you very much, Patrick, for the uh, the information. I may not always allow the comments to go on just simply because of the, of the sheer size of them, but I'll always give someone a shout out if they've um, if they've helped me in any way. So here we've got an animation. It's a really basic animation with a rotating camera effect that kind of zooms in on the character's face like that and I'll show you how to do that effect in another video. In this video we're just going to look at the render settings. First thing we want to do is we want to come into the general tab and we want to have a look at the pixel size. Now I've gone for 1280 by 720. You can do it any size you want really but in the interest of getting these animations to come out at a reasonable speed you kind of want to keep it to 720p or smaller if you're using you know not a very powerful rig the odds of me having this animation full size on the screen at any point are very slim anyway so 720 is fine obviously the aspect ratio for that is 16 by 9 what we're going to do is I'm going to come back to this tab in a minute so we want our render mode to be photo real always there's never really good reason to come out of that so the environment tab it really that's that's just however you have it set up for the scene you don't really need to play with this one set up your scene as if you were setting up a picture for your animation and then just don't worry about that so tone mapping is largely the same don't worry about that that should just be whatever is required for you to get the exposure correct in your scene spectral rendering should just all be off basically okay so in the filtering this is one of the few times when you're going to hear me actually recommend that we have the post noise on and the reason for that is that we're not rendering a single image that's going to be scrutinized down to the pixel it's going to be it's a moving image that is going to be on the screen for quite literally a fraction of a second it's not as desperately important that we have every single pixel being absolutely perfect so have the post noise available have it turned on and then have it set to maybe 350 for now we'll come back to that optimization we're just going to have everything turned off alpha just leave that as it is so in the progressive rendering tab this is where we're going to set things up to be a little bit faster now i've got the rendering quality enabled switched to off and the max samples is currently set to 400 400 or 500 neither here nor there really but you know obviously the, the higher you have the number the longer it's going to take to render so for this scene because it's quite close up on the model's face which means that some of the renders are going to take a little bit longer because they have a bit more detail in i keep the max samples nice and low anything between sort of 300 and 500 is what you want to be aiming for here so then when we come back into our filtering because I've got the max samples set to 400 we want the post denoiser start iteration to be on 350 so it kicks in just before the end of the render you don't want it to be doing this on every single iteration you want to have it nice and close to the end so that it's not taking up extra time you can also have your firefly enabled as well which will reduce the number of speckles in the render 
and that's really all there is to it in regard to that once you've got it set set up you can come back to your general tab and you can set it to an image series now we're doing this image series because we can play around with it afterwards in photoshop if we want to we can change the exposure we can increase the size of the frames and we can do all of that with the image series so we're going to create the image series the start range because it's 120 frames it's a 60 frames a second animation 120 frames so it's two seconds long so we'll have the start at zero and end at 120 and then all we have to do is choose a folder where we're going to save it and the series base is the name that the images are all going to be given so you call this one like dave the first image will be dave 000 then it'll be dave 001 and so on and so forth and then all you have to do is hit render and then it'll rattle through those as quickly as possible dependent on the speed of your computer and then you'll be given a series of images now what you can do in adobe photoshop is you can actually turn those images into an animation and i'm going to show you how to do that right now so here we are in adobe photoshop and the first thing that i've done is i've clicked on the pane in the top right hand corner and i've changed from whatever other the workspace that i've been working in and i've gone into motion which has given us this timeline on the bottom now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to file and i'm going to go to open and as you can see i've done a quick sort of half render of this animation here and we are going to select the first one like this and i'm going to click on this bit in the bottom that says image sequence and that's the key to getting this to work so select the first image click on image sequence and then hit open it'll ask you what the frame rate is so in this case it's 60 frames a second and we're going to hit ok da -da -da -da. so here we are it's got all of our frames loaded and if we were to hit the play button you can see that's the animation that we've got thus far and we can drag that backwards and forwards as much as we want now we can apply filters to this if we want to by creating adjustment layers because this is just photoshop it's just going to work the same as photoshop so i'm going to click on the the adjustment layer down here that's where i'm going to click on and we could create a hue and saturation layer for example and we can just drop the saturation down if we wanted it to be black and white we could yank it up you can do all of those things so i'm going to undo i'm going to delete that layer like so and there we go so now we've got this video we can apply effects to it if we want to i'm not going to bother now all we have to do to get this out as a video is we go to file export render video and then it'll come up with all of this gubbins here all you want to do is you want to make sure that it's set to adobe media encoder format h.264 check that your resolution is correct that your frame rate is correct all here all frames or you can select a range if you don't want to do the whole thing give it a file name hit render and bobs your uncle i'm not going to do it because i've already done it and on the screen you should have just seen the animation completed and rendered out and that's really all there is to it so thank you ever so much for watching i look forward to hearing your comments in the section below give me a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye bye